Hey everybody, this is Vic from Vic's Creative Corner. Today we are going to talk about creating a game launcher for Loop Deck. Yes, I said it, a game launcher. First things first, our workspace. We're going to label this Game Launcher 2.0 because I actually have mine saved to number three and it will show you at the end that. What we're going to do is drag Game Launcher 2.0 to number four on our button key here. And then what we're going to do is remove all unnecessary items that we don't need. So the first thing that you can select is either run or web page. Those are the only two options that we're going to actually use to make the game launcher for multiple platforms. Um, and I'm showing you here under custom that you can do the same thing or right click and select run or web page. In this case, we're going to do web page. So there are going to be some platforms that we're going to talk about. There is Steam, Ubisoft and Epic on the left here. They actually run on URLs. And then on the right side, we have GOG.com, which are going to be files, locations, as well as Blizzard and EA or Origin. So first things first, let's start with the URLs. We're going to go to properties. We're going to select the URL for the Steam game. We're going to copy that. And that's all we're going to need in this area. So we're going to go back to our UI for Loop Deck. We're going to select here web page. Once we select web page, it's going to take us to this create web page action. We're going to paste the URL. We're going to label the game. That way I know what it is. And then select our icon. Now you do not want to go to icon library. You actually want to go to a custom folder. So select the little folder icon with the magnifier. And if you've already done what I've done and created the icons, go ahead and select your game icon. All righty. Now you can maximize or minimize the pixels within the square, which I think is really awesome. So that way you have a visual of it. And we're going to click on create once done. After we do that, we're going to test the game. So we're going to tap it on our launcher, on our loop deck, and it is going to open up the game for us. It may take a moment. So once the game is launched, as you can see, the controller is being recognized. You're seeing the game starting up here. Um, once that's done, we already know that it's working. And I'm actually testing this with every game, so that way you're able to see what's going to transpire after we launch the game. So the next one is going to be Ubisoft. We're going to select web page again. We can label this Far Cry 6, but what we need to do is copy the URL. So we're going to go to properties. We're going to go copy the URL for Ubisoft for this particular game. And we're going to go back to our loop deck UI and we're going to paste that URL there under create web page action and label this Far Cry 6 because that's the game. And now we're gonna select the icon for Far Cry 6. So we're gonna go to our icon folders and we're gonna select the icon and we're gonna click on save and then we're gonna click on create. So that's our second game. Now we're gonna launch it. Now Far Cry 6, I had to actually minimize the time because the boot time took forever. Um, so that's the only thing is, this is actually shorter than the actual boot time. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to let you know that it is working. So once you tap the button, it is going to take a while to load and then the game is going to start, which I think is pretty awesome. Now, if your game is needing an update, the update is going to happen first. Just keep that in mind if you haven't updated your games. All right, so now we know that the game is working. We're going to go ahead and close out of this and go back to the UI and do the next game, which is T Tiny Tina's Wonderlands by Epic Games. So we're going to go to web page again because Epic Games does use URLs as well. And we're going to go to properties and copy the URL. Once we copy the URL, we're going to go ahead and uh, paste that in the UI. Once we paste that, we're going to label the game. And this is a rinse and repeat repetitive thing, even though it's different launchers. We're going to select the icon once we're done, go to our icon folders, select the Tiny Tina's Wonderlands icon. And then we're going to launch the game. You're going to see a little dragon that's optimizing the shaders once, once it's complete. And then the next thing that we're going to talk about is the file extensions to launch, and that's under Run. So again, you can right click or you can go to custom and select either web page or run in your workspace. Because right now this is what we're in. We're in our workspace under button number four. So the game should be booting pretty shortly here. Now I removed all audio from the game and stuff. I just wanted to show you the functionality of the game. So we know it works. All right, so we're going to close out the game once it's done doing what it needs to do. 
And then the next thing we're going to talk about is those file extensions that I was talking about. So in this one, you're going to have to copy target paths. Now, the target paths usually come with quotations. We do not need those quotations. Again, we're going to select Run. We're going to go to the properties of the file. So this one is GOG.com. We're going to copy the file path. We're going to go back to the UI. We're going to paste the file path and remove the parentheses, or I'm sorry, the uh, quotations. In this case, this one doesn't have quotations, so that's great. And we're going to go to our icon. We're going to select the game icon. Once we're done, we're going to maximize or minimize the pixels, select Save, Create, and then we're going to tap the button on our loop deck and we're going to see it launch. Now we're going to rinse and repeat for the one for Blizzard as well as EA. With Blizzard, I do want to kind of throw a side note out there. On the Blizzard icon launcher, on the Blizzard launcher, I should say, um, it's going to cause the game launcher itself to boot and not the actual game. That's just how Blizzard operates. You have to have the launcher open. So we're going to go to run. We're going to go and copy the properties for our Diablo 3. It's going to tell us our target path or our file path. We're going to copy that. It's going to have the quotations in there. So we're going to paste that. We're going to remove those quotations. We're going to label it. And then we're going to select our icon. Once we select our icon and we click on create, we're going to launch the game and it's going to actually launch the game launcher. Now, again, this is for Loop Deck users. So I hope this has been a lot easier for you all, for those who've been trying to figure out how to make a game launcher for Loop Deck. And then after we're done with Diablo, we're doing the last one that I have as a launcher, which is going to be EA or Origin. Um, Origin has changed out with EA as far as their um, launchers. So if you have Origin Gaming, you can try it through Origin. If not, you can do it through EA. And you're just basically copying the file path. So this one is going to use a target path as well, which is a file location. We're gonna collect, we're gonna copy this and we're gonna remove the quotes. I'm getting tongue tied here. And then what we're gonna do is create the launcher or the uh, function to run. So same thing, rinse and repeat. We're going to remove the quotations. We're going to label the game. We're going to choose the icon. We're going to click on create. And then we're going to launch the game. Once we're done doing that, we're going to talk about some additional features. As you can see with the Loop Deck CT, I have some additional functions. If you have a Loop Deck CT, you can follow along. If you do not, that is okay. Now, the maximum pages that you can create for your launcher or pages in general for your functions is 14, but no more than 14. So we know that the game is going to work. It's already launching it. It takes a moment. But here we go. The game is about to boot, so we know that it's going to function. Now, once this is done, we're going to talk about those CT functions that I have for those who are CT users as well. So this tool is not just for editing. It's not just for photography. Um, it is also for streaming because the upper half of that is what the Loop Deck Live is. And the Loop Deck Live is used with streamers um, as well as content creators. So I'm going to show you a finished product of what I've done with my launchers. Mine is a total of eight pages. Um, and what I'm doing is toggling between these on the one, two, three, four buttons that I have. And then with my CT, I'm actually using the C and the D button, which are the arrow keys that you see at the bottom right here. And I'm actually toggling between previous touch page and next touch page. And then the FN keys actually do it for my wheel. So I can actually change a couple of functions tied to my wheel. Um, one is audio and the other is brightness. So I toggle between those by holding down the FN key. The other is the A and B button, or if you want to say the up and down arrows. And those are actually going to be my dial pages. And those actually change between 
what I have configured. My dial pages are my audio dials, and uh, the lower one, this page two, is actually going to be my key lights. So uh, yeah, I can customize those things. You can customize them too, depending on the plugins that you're using. But I hope that this has been informative for you. Um, these are functions that you can set up for the CT or just Loop Deck Live without the CT features that I'm demonstrating right here. But I wanted to thank you all for watching the video, and I hope that this has made it a lot easier for at least the gamers portion of it using the Loop Deck, um, whether you're using the Loop Deck Live or the Loop Deck CT. Thanks for watching.